Hi guys, for today's video, we were gonna talk about the module 3, lesson 1, which is about the instructional materials in education. This is Shane D. Abalos, and without further ado, let's get started. So the contents of this topic, we have here the guide to the selection, rows of instructional materials, different types of instructional materials, and the specific purposes of the instructional materials. So let's tackle first the guidelines in the selection of instructional materials. The instructor must be thoroughly familiar with the content of all media used in the instruction. Second, select only instructional media that are consistent with the student's capabilities and learning styles. Also, the instructional media should be chosen objectively rather on the basis of teacher's personal preference or bias, chosen on the basis of their contribution to the learning outcomes, produced locally by instructor, usually make significant contribution to learning, follow learning activities, and lastly, appropriate to the teaching formats being used. So here are the guidelines in the selection of instructional materials. We have the purpose, flexibility, development, guide learners, objective, diversity, and content. Second is the three basic classes of instructional materials and their roles in different teaching. First, individualized instruction. Examples are directed study, open learning, distance learning, program learning, mediated self-instruction, computer-based learning. The roles of the teachers or instructors are producer or the manager of resources, tutors and guides. Second is the group learnings. Examples are tutorials, seminars, group exercises and projects, games and simulations, self-help groups. The role of the teachers or instructors are the organizer and the facilitators. The third is the mass instructions. Examples are conventional lectures and expository lessons, televisions and radio broadcasts, and films. The roles of the teacher or instructors are the traditional expository role and the controller of instruction process. The third is the type of instructional materials. Materials and technology are Technology offers the possibility of alternative materials and classroom interaction. After audio and video cassettes, the next major technological change was the use of computers and the internet. The internet is bringing further changes as courses can now be downloaded from all over the world. Types of instructional materials We have here the printed and duplicated materials. So these are comprises of all textual and handout materials to be used by students or trainees which can be gone off in large number by printing machines, photocopiers, and duplicators. Second, the non-projected display materials. So these are visuals that do not need the use of equipment for projection. The third is the still projected display materials. So these materials are media design that can be enlarged, zoom in, and zoom out. The fourth is the technological material. So these are systems, devices, and apparatus that presents and adapt information during the teaching process 
in order to improve processes. Next is the which is selecting suitable material specific purposes. So let's ask, what educational objective or learning outcome do you want to achieve? So what basic instructional strategy do you think would most suitable for achieving this objective with the people you will be working with, taking account of all relevant factors? So this includes the four major materials with the specific purposes. We have here the mass instruction, the group learning, the individualized learning, and the direct experience. Next, let's talk about the online tools for teaching and learning. First is the Kahoot. Kahoot is a free student response tool for administering quizzes, facilitating discussion, or collecting data. It is a game-based classroom response system played by the whole class in real time. Next is the Pickers. Pickers are an assessment tools which allows teachers to collect on the spot formative assessment data through online games and lessons. Next is the EdPuzzle. EdPuzzle is a free assessment-centered tool that allows teachers and students to create interactive online videos by embedding either open-ended or multiple choices, audio notes, audio tracks, or comments on the video. Next online tool is the ClassKick. ClassKick is a free digital formative assessment tool that allows teachers to create lessons and assignments that students work through on their devices at their own space. Next is the Padlet. Padlet is a virtual bulletin board in which collaborator can simultaneously create and organize posts of any content type, whether it be text, documents, images, videos, links, and etc. Next is the Schoology. Schoology is an online learning management system that allows educators to organize curriculum, create lessons, lesson plans, and provide students assessments. Next is the Quizlet. Quizlet takes information and converts it into flashcard quizzes and games so that users can study the same information in a variety of forms. Next is Canva. Canva can be used to create a variety of images including flyers, resume, pictures, and infographics. Next is YouTube. YouTube is a free tool that allows you to create, collect, and organize video around specific topic or interest. And lastly is the Muslim Kids TV. It is the first Islamic internet TV for children to spend time for learning about Islam, enjoy interactive games, download and print educational resources. Before I end my video, I'll ask you first some questions about this topic. First, is it possible to use online tools in classrooms? Next, is there any medium of instructional materials that best fits all purposes? So those questions, I will be leaving you. You will answer it at your own pace. I hope you learned something from it and thanks for listening. This is Shane D. Abalas and see you at my next video. Bye-bye!